certain pieces of gear are synonymous with modern music. The color they impart defines rock and roll. Just the image of a Gibson Les Paul or a Marshall Stack conjures up feelings of freedom and rebellion and gives us memories of important events in our lives. Other equipment may not be as recognizable if you're not a musician or in a studio, but music as we know it would not be the same. This is the sound of rock and roll, the Neve console and 1073 preamp. Before I get into this detailed history on the 1073, if you're a music lover like I am, like learning music production, engineering, like learning about gear, mic placement, plugins, or just like hearing new tunes, like and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to build a community around this channel, and I'm going to keep the videos coming. Exactly one month after the Beatles broke up on April 10th, 1970, Rupert Neve released his 1073 preamp and EQ. Rupert had spent his life in electronics, tinkering with radios as a child. When wartime called, he joined the Royal Army Signal Corps and honed his electronic skills. And just earlier that year, he had released the BCM-10 console and 1066 mic preamp. George Martin was an early adopter of Rupert's technology, putting a Neve console in his air studios in London. Neves are known for particularly pleasing and musical saturation. Second and third order harmonics make them sound even better when their peaks are pushed into the red. The A88 console was the first to use Rupert's 1073 preamp design. The 1066 and 1084 preamps are also the same circuitry with different EQ points. These are Class A designs. Also the Class AB1081 featuring again different EQ points is a similar circuit design. Rupert's consoles could be had with any of these combinations of preamps. The Neve console and 1073 preamp were the pinnacle of design and craftsmanship. Rupert's background in the military, in broadcast, and in radio meant that the signal source had to be super pure. He accomplished this by using both input and output transformers, which was rare at the time. He employed Elma switches, Canford wire, and Marinair transformers, which were later Carnhill and St. Ives, and we'll get into that more when we talk about modern reproductions. The 1073 featured an active EQ, which was the first of its kind. There were Pultec and other passive EQs, but making the 1073 active meant it was very symmetrical and well behaved, with nearly 20 dB of boost. The 1073 has a high shelf with a gradual slope for both boost and cut, making it warm, never strident, even at max boost, similar to an EQP1A when both boost and cut are engaged. The 8014, 8024, and 8034 were the first of this 80 series. The 8014 had 16 channels, 4 buses, and 8 track monitoring. The 8024 had 24 tracks, and the 8034 had 20 tracks. Adding 4 more buses gives you the 80 series consoles ending in 6, the 8016 featured 16 input, 16 track monitoring, and 12 inch tall modules you could choose from either 1064 or 1081 pre's. The 8026 was 24 input, 16 track monitoring, and used 8 and 3 quarter inch modules, either 1073 or 1084, and the 8016A was also available in this configuration. The 8036 is 24 input and 32 track monitoring using 1064 or 1081 preamps. If you multiply again by 2, taking the total of 16 buses, you have the 80 series consoles ending in 8. Of the 8028 through 8088 series, one of the most famous is the Sound City Neve, which now resides in Dave Grohl's studio. Dave Grohl's 8028 is heavily featured in the movie Sound City. It's a documentary about Sound City Studio in LA where many classic albums were recorded 
including Tom Petty, Damn the Torpedoes, Fleetwood Mac's first record, and Nirvana Nevermind. If you're watching this and you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you check it out. The Neve is basically a character in the story, and there's interviews with Rupert Neve and a lot of the famous musicians who tracked through that 8028. The 8058, 8068, and 8088 consoles moved to an AB inline design with a different paint scheme. And these are considered the most sophisticated in the Neve line and in the world. Pete Townsend also famously had Neves in his recording studios. First a BCM 10, then in 1970 an 8036, which began its life as 16 input, 8 bus, and 16 monitors. The next year in 1971, it expanded to 26 input and 24 monitors. Famously, this console was used to record The Who's Quadrophenia and many other classic albums from other artists. Fast forward to 2023 and we have dozens of 1073 style preamps from which to choose. Companies like Golden Age, Heritage Audio, Warm Audio, Black Lion, even AMS Neve all have their offerings with features designed for the modern project and commercial studio. Features like direct input, line level input, and metering are designed to make workflow easier for the artist and engineer in the modern age. Of all these brands, the one that captured my attention was the BAE 1073. The power supply on this module is huge, and when I plugged into it direct and played my first chords on guitar, I knew this was the sound of the Beatles' revolution. My BAE 1073 instantly solved a problem I'd been having writing riffs late at night after my son went to bed. I would plug directly into the interface and go into good digital plug-in amplifier emulations and sit for hours and not have anything to build a song upon. And I wasn't having this problem going into my amplifiers. The BAE solved it and it also inspired me to make this video and to learn about Rupert Neve. This 1970s technology still works so well to this day. I think Rupert's a genius. Let's talk about transformers. AMS Neve is the only company making a modern 1073 that can use the Mariner transformer. And while it is true that some vintage Neves had these Mariner transformers, it's my belief that only the very oldest vintage Neves use these transformers. In fact, I've read many discussions on gear pages from people who own vintage Neve consoles and modules and thought they had Mariner transformers, only to find when they opened them up, they were Carnhill St. Ives. Now when we talk about Carnhill St. Ives, they make many different input and output transformers for companies with 1073 designs. The only one that is an exact one-to-one -one recreation of a vintage Neve Carnhill transformer is the one they make for BAE. BAE originally stood for Brent Averill Enterprises. Brent Averill was a technician who in the 1980s began to work on vintage Neve and API consoles and modules. He got to know these designs so well he began making his own modules to retrofit into vintage consoles. He did these to very exacting specifications. And when he got to the point that he could no longer do it, he entrusted a man named Mark Lohman to run the company who still does to this day. Now BAE is a moniker for British Audio Enterprises. And it harkens back to Brent Averill Enterprises. The BAEs are the only designs that are hand-wired with these large outboard power supplies. All of the other 1073 and Neve clones use internal power supplies. And anyone who's into audio knows that the power supply means everything. In 1975, Rupert Neve sold his business, but this was far from his last noteworthy pro audio design. The next chapter began in 1985 when George Martin once again came calling, this time wanting an ultra clean and pristine console for his air studio 
in the Caribbean volcanic island of Montserrat. Rupert Neve designed a new module to ISA 110 and a console and called his company Focusrite. He designed two original Focusrite consoles. These Focusrite consoles were state of the art and labor intensive. Rupert could barely turn a profit and he was bought out. In the end, only 10 Focusrite consoles were ever made, and like the 80 series, they're considered some of the best sounding and rarest on earth. Rupert then worked for Amic for a short time before founding Rupert Neve Designs. These Rupert Neve Design preamps are much like the Focus Rites in that they're ultra clean and pristine sounding. But Rupert knew what his customers wanted and he knew that the harmonic saturation of the 1073 was the sound of rock and roll. So he gave them a silk circuit with red and blue channels to add a harmonic saturation to either the top or the low end. Rupert Neve died February 12, 2021. He was 94 years old. Very few people have made as great or as many contributions to sound as he did. Millions of people all over the world have enjoyed his designs, even if they don't know his name. 1073s are my first choice for mic preamp and direct input in my studio.